Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians. Thank you for taking time to join me today. I'd like to lay a little bit of groundwork here before we get to the courage of Christ. And that is the Apostle Paul, basically in his epistles, let everyone know what was going on in the other churches. I think it's important that we know exactly what is going on in the Christian faith, not just in our own particular realm. The other fact is, as I want to mention here, is that a lot of Christians do not have the capacity to watch a six or eight or ten minute video. Yet they can sit through sermons, which does not even have the word of God in it. And they'll be there all day long. So my friends, this is what I prepared for you, and hopefully there's some inspiration in it. My friends, I do not know if the good Lord was trying to show me how dense I was, or maybe I just was not smart enough to realize when I attended Melody Land Church in Anaheim, California, I was at the beginning of an evangelical televangelistic three-ring circus. I was sincere in my faith, that's for sure, but naive is not the word that describes me. I was plain ignorant of what was beginning to take place. I was so excited about the gospel at this time and truly believed the charismatic movement, particularly in Southern California. And I believed it would help unite Christians, build the church, help and heal the nation. Melody Land was originally a theater in the 1960s before it became Melody Land Christian Center in 1969-1970. I attended in the 70s when I was in my 20s. It was built like a circus arena, and the list could go on of all the well-known evangelists who preached and sang there. Catherine Coleman, Chico Holiday, Benny Hinn. There was a genuine move of revival there, and TBN hosts Paul and Jan Crouch got quite a, a boost there concerning the beginning of their television ministry being located nearby. Many from Calvary Chapel Revival in the Costa Mesa area were attending there as well. It was flourishing, but just for moments. For momentarily, it began to falter. It ran into financial trouble, and it makes one wonder where all the funds went. It is said Melody Land had a 10,000 member attendance, but over the years they went into default. Ironically, I began noticing a difference in the pastor. He was not as fiery in his sermons, and the day he announced a book he wrote about people entering into heaven and returning back, that's when I knew the circus was beginning. He then was torn between the prosperity gospel Paul and Jan Crouch preached and smothered and savored over. And he had a staunch staff member in his school of theology who detested the gospel of gain. Now one would wonder why I am relating this. In reality, it is no different than the Apostle Paul in his epistles, letting others know of the beginning of churches he established and how they faltered so quickly. We are reminded in Revelation of the churches that Christ said were corrupt in the faith. Some he said that some had the seat of Satan in them, and some he said had the spirit of Jezebel in them. That was teaching and seducing the saints. It is somewhat bewildering because generally most Christians cannot watch a six to eight to 10 minute video about the church or the Christian faith. Interesting enough, such videos like this are about 1,400 to 2,000 words long, and that is exactly what the Apostle Paul's and many of the epistles were. Anyone with any common sense should be able to realize Christianity is all theater today, and it is not about Christ. It is not about Christ who walked beside two men on the road to Emmaus after his resurrection, who talked with them, and their comment was, did not our hearts burn within us when he was talking with us? It is not about Christ saying, I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is not about Christ standing in the synagogue and saying, today this prophecy is fulfilled in your ears. 
saying, I have come to set the captives free. A point of interest also is that Melody Land, there was another staff member who wrote a book called The Kingdom of the Colts. It was a book about 700 pages long, and oh, how they promoted and advertised this book. In fact, they tagged the author, The Bible Answer Man. My impression was, my God, you spent all that time and energy on a book that basically is meaningless if you are filled with the Holy Ghost. My general thought was, why can't you write a book that thick about Christ? Or write a Bible commentary? A book about corrupt religions has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost power of the Lord. As the Lord says, let the blind lead the blind, let them both fall into the same ditch. The substitution for notoriety over Christ was beginning, and it has escalated to the point of no return. In reality, the mighty rushing wind of the Holy Ghost and the tongues of fire should be the forefront of the church. You should be able to walk into any church and feel the presence of God. Walk into any pastor's home and feel the presence of God. There is a story of Smith Wigglesworth and how someone came to visit him. He only read his Bible, and the person who visited him was visibly shaken that the power of God was so present when he visited him. The presence of the Lord was wherever Wigglesworth went. This is missing in our time. The Bible is not important. The preacher, the pastor, the televangelist, the evangelist is important and is more than obvious if you visit these people they are as your average citizen. There is nothing different about them. There is no presence of Christ, but you can be sure everyone knows what channel they are on, what books they have written, what discs and videos they have made. But most, if not all, cannot tell you what their sermons were or when they attended their meetings. It has gotten worse over the years. Christ our Lord, who is the foundation of the church, is walked upon as if he is just a name etched in the corner of the sidewalk. But the well-known preachers of today relish to have their star on Hollywood Boulevard. They want the fame and glitter over Christ. Our Lord would not speak to Pilate when he was standing before him. Legend has it that when Pilate decided to have him flogged, it was to jar and loose his tongue. Christ being innocent and Pilate knew it still sent him to the flogging pole. It is said he received 50 lashes with a whip that had iron split shots on the end of each talon. There is much to deduce from this story in our Bible, but the question is, if Christ our Lord was willing to suffer for the gospel, are we that willing? Are we willing to stand on the behalf of Christ? Are we willing enough to stand for the truth of the gospel and against the false heretical preaching of today? We know the story of our Lord standing next to Barabbas. Are we willing to stand on the behalf of Christ against the jeers and lies of the religious elite who cry, give us vice, give us sedition, give us the murderer and seditionist above Christ? Our Lord did. St. Paul did. All the apostles did. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Our Lord spoke with authority because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The apostles had the witness they were turning the world upside down because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. It is questionable if one is filled with the Holy Ghost if you are not driven in defense of Christ, his reputation, his glory, his majesty, his power, and driven to guard the church against false prophets and preachers as our Lord did in Revelation. We are told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, our drive within us by the Holy Ghost will give us a mind and a heart with great respect for the power of God. Many wonder about the wheels in Ezekiel's vision that were full of eyes. 
It represents the Holy Ghost and how it goes to and fro throughout the earth and sees everything. The Holy Ghost will show us what it has seen and reveal to us what we should do. He will guide us into all truth and show us things to come. That does not necessarily mean world prophecy. He will also show us what deception and corruption will come and be within the church. The Holy Ghost does not show us only hallelujahs. It shows us, as our Lord said, and the epistles relate, deceitful men and false brethren. My friends, the power of the Holy Ghost and the tongues of fire are not extinguished. They are ever present. The Holy Ghost upon us will be a witness to others and that the presence of God is with us. This we should be sure of every day and ask if we have shunned its glorious power. This is a question we all should ask. For truly then, if we ask this question, we not only are seeking Christ, but we truly are following after him. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.